In woodworking and with the table saw, we do a lot of talking about using a sled for just about any kind of cross cutting that we're gonna do. Don't get me wrong, I love my sled, but there are times when the sled I think is a bit of an overkill or it can't do exactly everything I want it to do. For example, if I have a long piece of wood that's maybe four feet long and I'm cutting it into pieces, after I've made my cut, it will drop off the side of my sled and usually onto the floor. If I had a sled that was a little bit longer, like to the side of my table, I wouldn't have that problem, but then it would become much heavier. And that's another reason why this sled is sometimes an overkill. Sleds can be very heavy. This one weighs about 15 pounds. And for me to be able to lift it off the floor and put it up here just to do a single cut, it's kind of an overkill. And I do a lot of this when I'm in the middle of a project, rotating back and forth. Another thing that my sled won't do is it won't make angled cuts. Now I can always add a piece of wood on here that's at an angle, which I've showed before in the past. This is part of that project to cut a 45 degree angle, it's much easier to use a miter gauge to make those angles. Table saws can also be very difficult to get an exact 90 degree angle with. But with the miter gauge that came with your table saw, you can get that 90 degrees a lot easier. So you're not really fighting to get that perfection right when you start out. So I'm gonna be making a miter arm with this with a stop in this video. And in future videos, I will make some jigs that will attach to this. I just think that there's a lot more that we can do with the miter gauge. So let's go ahead and make a miter arm now. To get started with this, I've got three two inch pieces that I'm going to laminate together. When we attach this to the miter gauge, we want them all to stack up like this, and then they will attach to our miter gauge. Now you might be thinking, why not just attach it like this? The nice thing about plywood is that it's dimensionally stable along its face. It's more likely to expand in this direction than it is in this direction, if it does expand at all. Another reason to do it like this is that the plywood is not always straight. And if I turn these on the side, you can see what I mean, that it's not something that I wanna rely on. And I've cut this with my table saw and I know that each piece is exactly the, is what I need it to be. So I know that these are exactly square with each other. We'll be back after this is dried. As you can see, I added holes and I tried to use some carriage bolts to hold everything in place, but it didn't work out the way that I wanted to. When you clamp yours down, just make sure that you clamp it to a flat surface to make sure that you are going to be square. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring this over to the table saw and I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. So what I've done is I've found the side that is the most flat of all four sides and I'm gonna use some double-sided tape on it. I've got some melamine here that, that I know is flat, and I'm just gonna tape this to the side of it to attach my stock and make sure that it's square to the fence. I've locked my fence in place, and now I'll just take a ruler and make sure that I'm about 3 eighths of an inch away from it. Then I'll take my piece, find the side that's the flattest, and I'll go ahead and tape this down against the fence, and I'm gonna try really hard not to move my board down below. From here now, I can go around and square up each side. And now I can put a square on this. And I am looking really good. Now I'll bevel my saw blade so that I can cut off one of these corners, which will make it easier for me to later push it as I'm working with the arm. To attach the arm to the miter gauge, I will be using some hanger bolts with some knurled thumb knobs to attach it. After I put them inside my groove here, and these are quarter inch, so you're gonna have to find the ones that fit inside of your gauge. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little mark on the end of it, on that point. I'll place this so that it goes over the blade. I'm just gonna make a couple marks. There's one there and one right there. Okay, I've got a little epoxy here. This might not be necessary. Just put a little bit inside each hole. A friend of mine, Jared, a few years ago taught me this trick. First, we'll go ahead and stick it inside the hole. 
the wood threaded side down, and then we'll use some nuts that will jam together, and then I should just be able to turn this in. And we'll tighten this up. The fence has a method of being able to control how much you cut. So I think that it's only fair that we do the same thing with our miter arm. So you're gonna need to have a T-track and a few scraps of wood. This is a piece of plywood and mine's gonna be about two inches wide. This will be the piece that rides along the top and then my stop block will connect to it. So the first thing that I wanna do is cut this down to size. Now I'm just gonna roughly mark this at about two inches. And this is what we're working with. Before I attach the T-Track to the top, I wanna to make a profile on this that will fit and lay flush to the, the front. That way as I attach this, I can make sure that it's flush all the way across. I've got a tape that I'll be putting on the front of it, and this is actually 17 30 seconds, so slightly bigger than a half of an inch. So I'm gonna add that mark, and then my track is three quarters of an inch thick. So between here and here, I need to cut the section out so that my T-track will fit inside of that. Now with this on top, it has a nice, very tight feel, and I can go ahead and line this up, the track to the front. My tape should fit in there just fine. To attach my T-Track, I'm gonna use a self-centering hinge drill bit. What's nice about this is that the drill bit is directly in the center of this, and all I really have to do is make sure that this fits right in the center of my hole. It's a really cool drill bit. I'll have a link for it in the description. The most important part of this process is getting the first screw in and having everything line up just right. I'm gonna focus on making sure that this is flush, and then I'll use my drill bit to drill my first hole. Now, this doesn't really go in very far, which is okay because I can switch my bit out and use a longer drill bit. Now I'll use a number six drill bit to screw this in place. With that in place, I can bring this in here and find the next spot. Now, in order for this to attach to our T-Track, we need to add a hole in the center. So what I'll do is I'll take a speed square and line up my square on the end, and then I'm gonna draw a mark across it like this, flip it, and do one on the other side. That'll find the center of my block here, but I'm obviously gonna be a little bit off, so I need to move this back just a little bit. I'll find the center of my dado that I cut out, which is gonna be 12, and it's gonna be right there. I'll transfer my line above and then right across. Now I can take this and line it up on that X that we made earlier. And that is where I want to drill my hole out. I've got my stop here on the top, but now we obviously need to add a fence to the front. To find out where to cut my fence, all I need to do is line up a ruler and measure it. That is perfect. Now I need to attach this, and I think I'm just gonna use a little bit of glue and clamp it down. But the first thing that I need to do is I'm gonna add a little bit of a corner cut off here. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's nice to have a little bit of a relief here in case you do pack a little bit of sawdust in here. So I'm just gonna move my fence just a little tiny bit. And that's just a little tiny relief. It's just enough that any sawdust that might come in here is gonna be pushed under there and long enough that I can pull the fence back and clean it out later on. Now I'll just add a little bit of glue. And I did loosen up my track a little bit in case it's just slightly off. And I'm gonna put some clamps on this. I thought I was done, but I decided to detach this from my miter gauge and then clamp it to the front. Make sure that it is tight, as well as making sure that my thumb knob is on here really tight. So if I flip this over, you can see that this is flush and that this is flush on the sides here. And now we'll give it some time to dry. 
And finally, you can't have a stop block without having some kind of measuring tape. I'll have a link for this as well in the description. It'll also be on the website. What I need to do is set this on here and then pull the tape off the back and then it's done. And finally, to make sure that this is absolutely square, that there is no deviation between the, the bottom block here and this top block, I'm actually gonna go over the edge just a hair, lock it down, and then I'm gonna raise my blade and I'll cut that all to size on the edge. I'm gonna cut this at 18 inches and then we'll measure it. And that is right on 18. And this is it in its entirety. It's lightweight. It doesn't take much to stick it on my tabletop. I can connect it to the miter gauge just by sliding it in and locking these thumb knobs. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I do plan on making some more jigs with this in the future. This will be on the website. That will be in the description down below. It'll allow you to find things like the T-bolt, the thumb knob, and the tape, as well as the T-track. Thank you so much for watching.